Today's webinar is entitled Signify Lighting Academy, The Green Deal, a tipping point for good. Be presented by Adrian Joyce and Marcel Bugaboon. Our first presenter, Adrian Joyce, is the Secretary General of the European Alliance of Companies for Energy Efficiency in Buildings, or EuroACE. Our second presenter is Marcel Bugaboon. As Ambassador at Large for Climate, he is the dedicated representative of the Netherlands at international gatherings dealing with climate change. Now, to kick off the session with an introduction of Signify, I will now hand over to Thomas Linders. So, first of all, after the sun, Signify gives the most light light in the world. So maybe with that great background, I will, I will share with you my next slide. So Signify is the world leader in lighting, the number one in connected LED and conventional, with a turnover of 6.5 billion euros in 2020. We are working with 38,000 employees all over the world, and especially, I think very important also for the topic for today, we are 100% carbon neutral. So Adrian, um, for you and also for yours the floor thank you very much and i will back uh, after two presentations for q a thank you thomas good afternoon ladies and gentlemen it's a real pleasure to be here and uh, thank you to signify for the invitation they are one of our 15 uh, member companies and we greatly appreciate their support and the efforts there they make towards uh, highly energy performing buildings as uh, was said, I am the Secretary General of the European Alliance of Companies for Energy Efficiency in Buildings. We are based here in Brussels, and I hope what I have to say will give you a kind of a framework uh, and an understanding of the main moves of the European Union around a green uh, deal and a green recovery. And I will focus um, a fair amount of my presentation on the renovation wave strategy, which is one of the key uh, flagships of the European Green Deal. But before we go there, <clears throat> I thought it was worthwhile letting you know a bit about the building sector in the EU. It, it is a fact that we have about 210 million buildings in the European Union and uh, the area of those buildings, the, the square footage or the square meters of those buildings is roughly equivalent to the area of the country of Belgium. So imagine a one story building the size of Belgium that is uh, lit, heated, cooled for the comfort and convenience of occupants. That's a very, very large um, area of built of buildings. And what does this represent in some terms that would be maybe more familiar to you? Well, each year, buildings represent 50% of the fixed capital assets that are created in Europe. The operation of the buildings consumes 40% of primary energy and as a result emits 36% of greenhouse gas emissions. As a result, you can imagine that it's impossible for the European Union to reach its long-term climate goals without addressing these uh, huge numbers in the building sector. But beyond that, and that's, if you like, the environmental impact, uh, the economic impact is really uh, significant as well. The annual turnover in the construction sector, so all types of construction, not just buildings, uh, is around 1,400 billion euro per year, roughly 9% of EU GDP. There are about 16 million direct jobs in our sector, uh, jobs that are given by 3.5 million enterprises, giving you an idea of the fragmentation and complexity of the sector. And uh, it must be highlighted that 97% of, of those enterprises have less than 10 employees. So really micro enterprises, uh, ones that are quite difficult to help uh, change uh, their methods and their practices, which is something that we need. And I now pass you over to Marcel for the next um, part of this webinar. Thank you, Adrian. And um, thank you for everybody to uh, join us for this webinar. Um, what you have heard from both Thomas and Adrian uh, was very interesting and it it's, uh, illustrates what is going on. And what they both didn't do 
was tell you why we are doing this. And that is interesting to observe um, because that is really a development of the past couple of years. And I will, I will say something about that. Um, but normally when I started in this job as a climate envoy, um, I, I started addressing schools, businesses, um, all kinds of governments and, and other people that are interested in the topic. And I always had to start my presentation by explaining what climate change is, why it is important, what is, is the role of humans in that. Uh, until one day, a little schoolgirl, age nine, explained me perfectly what climate change is. And I thought, well, maybe from this moment on, I can skip that part of my presentation. And um, that is a very positive sign I will say something about that later as well. Um, but I will also double up a little bit on what uh, both Thomas and Adrian have just explained, but zooming out a little bit. And the first zoom out that I uh, would like to do is um, zooming out to what is called the blue marble. This is 1972. And uh, I guess you all know this picture. Uh, it was taken out of the Apollo 17. And the first time that people actually saw our Earth uh, in its full, um, in, in one picture, and how beautiful it is, and, and how complex it perhaps even is with its atmosphere, its oceans, and it, it, its land mass. And from that moment on, people also started realizing the fragility of the, uh, of the Earth's ecosystems, although it took a long time for us to actually get to where we are now, and um, to a moment that we actually don't have to start our presentations with referring to that. And don't get me wrong here, we are still not there yet, but presentations like the one that Adrian just gave, give me hope. And also the fact that over 400 people are listening in on this, uh, on this webinar, because we are really on a trajectory towards a very positive world in which uh, we hopefully have a re-greened environment, cleaner air and um, cleaner energy system and everything that comes with that. But it all started here in 1972, the same year that the uh, Club of Rome published its limits to growth. And um, in that report, which is uh, maybe next to the Bible, the, the best sold publication, at least the best sold scientific publication to date, um, the authors explained into what kind of, of boundaries we would run into in the, the next 50 years, measured from um, 1972. And a quick calculation teaches us that uh, that is about now. And that is exactly what we experience at the moment. We are bumping into those boundaries that were already laid out to us in this, uh, in this report by uh, Dennis Meadows and his co-authors. A very interesting read, and I can recommend you to, uh, to just browse through it again and see what the, um, uh, the, the issues are that they saw, uh, because they are the boundaries that um, we see at the moment uh, that we run into and that were referred to in, in many words by the previous two speakers. Someone who illustrated that well is uh, Johan Rockström by the Swedish Environmental Institute. And he kind of refined it a little bit um, and illustrated where we are at the moment. If you would see this as a dashboard, then we really have run or overrun some of those boundaries already. Of course, in uh, biodiversity or the biosphere, um, we know what the dire state of our uh, environment is and how many species we have already lost in uh, the past decades mostly by our own fault and our own behavior. And um, you can just go over these areas and, we, and you, you can see that um, other flashlights are blinking as well on our dashboard. We don't have time. And I can underscore the quote that Adrian just gave from, uh, from Franz Timmermans. There is no time to lose here, um, but it also creates many opportunities if we do this cleverly. 